50 years after the assassination of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Americans have a renewed sense of civic duty to protest and they hope for change. There have been the women's marches, the Mar Black Lives Matter marches, and now, the March for Our Lives. Here at BU, Dr. King is forever memorialized. I sat down and spoke with Jacob Gervis, a sophomore at BU, who joined in the protest in Washington, D.C. this weekend. Thanks for joining me, Jacob. Of course. So what makes this issue so important to you? I think when you're looking at what's going on in America today, there's just no way to ignore this. Um, it's, it's honestly become an, uh, an epidemic. There's a school shooting almost every month at this point. And what makes this different to me is that the, the solutions are just so clear. Um, common sense gun reform has been a conversation in America for the last 20 years, and nothing has really been done. Any progress that we had has been erased by this administration. So at this point, there's, it's, it's easy to feel helpless, and it's easy to feel like throwing in the towel is the best thing to do, but we can't do that because there are lives on the line and there are children's lives on the line. Um, and children should not be going to school fearing for their lives. They should be going to school feeling like they're safe and that they're loved and that they can learn without worrying about a gunman coming into their classroom. And it was this issue was just too important to not act. And what made you decide to travel to Washington, D.C. for this march? Um, I thought the, the opportunity to go to D.C. was just too good to say no to. Um, the Hillel here at BU, there was a group of kids that wanted to go down together, and we said, you know, why not? Um, we were able to get funding and support from our staff, and we got we rented a van, we drove down together, and I definitely would have gone to the one in Boston if I had stayed here. But the opportunity to go in March with over 800,000 other Americans in the nation's capital, with the Capitol building off in the distance, um, it was just such a powerful opportunity, and I knew that um, for years to come, I'll remember that I was there and that I was part of history. And I wasn't there, so can you tell me what it was like to be there at that march in D.C.? It was, it was overwhelming um, in a really powerful and emotional way, standing there with parents and children and grandparents, just anyone who has been impacted by this issue at all, or, or people like me who care, because I haven't been personally impacted, but I felt it was important to, to be part of it. And every, every speaker at the march was, was a young person, uh, most of them younger than me. So getting to stand there and watch you know, kids who are 11, 12 years old speak about their personal experiences with kind of, you know, more poise than many of our politicians was, was really eye-opening, was really powerful, um, and it was really amazing to, to see the passion that other people have and that there's momentum. This is, as they, as they said many times during the march, this is a revolution, and it was really exciting to be a part of it. And when you look back on the march in 10 or 15 years, what is going to be the one or two memories that stand out the most to you? Right now, um, the, the thing that stood out to me most was when um, Martin Luther King Jr.'s granddaughter spoke. She's nine years old, and she, she was a surprise guest. She was brought out at the end of one of the Parkland leaders' speeches, and she kind of just completely captivated the crowd, and she, she led us in a chant, um, so, you know, we are a great generation, and she made the, the crowd repeat her words over and over again, getting louder, and it was such a powerful moment. She, she said, I too have a dream. Um, so that moment, definitely, I'm never going to forget seeing that. And the other part, getting to go with BU students, just getting to be there next to my friends and my, my peers was also really powerful to feel a, a community. The whole march was a community, but being with people that I felt, you know, connected to was really, was really great, too. And what's the biggest change that you want to see come from this march? I think it's it's clear to me, and I hope it. Be, I guess the answer is I hope it becomes clear to our politicians that this can't be ignored. Thoughts and prayers are not going to change anything. Um, we shouldn't have to keep waiting for the next shooting and the next shooting and the next shooting to say, okay, then you know we'll deal with it. Then this is a an, a solvable, a preventable problem, and with millions of people worldwide marching and coming together around this one issue, there's really no way that anyone can ignore it anymore. And the time for change is really now. Great. Thanks so much for sitting with me. Thanks today. for having me.